What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Tableau tutorial series. In this video, we're gonna be going over bins and calculated fields. All right, so let's jump right into it. The first thing that we're gonna look at are bins. And bins are basically just groupings or ranges of numerical values. So we cannot create bins uh, for genre, name, platform, or anything like that. We have to do something uh, with this sign right here, which means that it is a numeric. So year or all of this sales data or this ranking data. And we're gonna use what we worked on in our very first tutorial. And so what we're gonna be using to kind of demonstrate how bins work is this year right down here. So right now we have a range of 1993 all the way up to 2018. And we're gonna create some bins to group and create ranges for these years. And it's pretty simple. All we're gonna do I'm going to come right over here to year and this little drop down on the side and we're going to go down to create and go down to bins. Now it's going to say the size of bin and it's going to give you a recommendation based off of the information that is already provided, the min and the max, uh, the ranges of these values. You know, you don't have to do this, but usually um, it, it does give some good uh, estimation on what you might be considering. If you were thinking, hey, maybe do a, a bit of like 20 and they're recommending two, think about why they might be doing that. Uh, we're gonna change ours to five and you can always change what this field is going to be. I'm just gonna give it an old exclamation point just to um, really spice things up here. So we're gonna click okay. And as you can see, it adds it right up here it is no longer, um, it is no longer a numeric, now it is a categorical. So it, now it's, this is no longer just uh, one, two, three, four, five, it's ranges, it's groups. And we're gonna get rid of this year really quick. Actually, let's keep it up there for a second, uh, see what happens. But we're gonna bring this up and we'll get rid of this year. And this is, is what kind of it spits out for us. Now, I did look at the data um, when I was prepping for this. There are some nulls in the years um, and so all we're gonna do for this is we're just gonna go like this and we're going to exclude the nulls. Uh, probably not something you should be doing uh, if you're doing this for work, but this is for demonstration purposes, so we can do whatever we want. But as you can see, we now have these ranges. So this range starts at 1990 and it includes 1990 all the way up to 1994. And then it's 1995 to 1999. And so just really quickly, we can tell that the years 2000 to 2004 were a huge, huge, huge uh, season or group of, of years for game sales. So these are the global sales for, for these video games. And so it is really helpful. It's very useful. Um, you can do this on a lot of different information. We could do this on the sales data. You can do this on age. You can do it on years like we did. And it can be very, very useful. And so uh, really quickly, that is how bins work. Uh, I would say it's pretty straightforward. Now, this is a perfect time to segue into the next part of the video, which is calculated fields. Uh, right over here on this left-hand side, we see that the global sales, which are in millions, goes all the way up to 900 million and created these beautiful bins right down here. But let's look at within these from 1999 to 2015, let's see which of these has the highest percentage. Of course, it's gonna be this one, but we can do something called a quick table calculation. Uh, we'll create a, our own calculation later and I'll show you how to do that. But we're gonna do a quick table calculation and we're gonna do the percent of total. And so now we have these bins and instead of just seeing the total amount of sales that they had, we see the actual percentages based off these year ranges, which is really useful, something that you could absolutely put uh, in some real work that you do for a client. Now really quick, just to show you something that you can do, if you click control and you drag this over here, you can actually save that calculation. So we can say percentage of global sales. And that actually saves it as uh, you know a measure for us. So that was a quick calculation, but let's look how to actually create a calculated field. So if we do this right here, what is going to come up is just the global sales. And you can do a lot of what you would basically do in Excel, multiplication, division, subtraction, a few other things, but we're gonna keep it super, super simple today. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take global sales and I'm going to subtract, I'm gonna do an open bracket and I'm gonna say EU sales and it auto completes for me. I'm gonna click okay. And it created calculation two. I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna say 
global sales minus EU sales. And let's drag this over. These are different. Um, one's percentage, one is in terms of sum. And so I'm just going to bring this in right here. And so now we are comparing against the same thing. And if we look at the global sales, we have probably right around 950 million ish in this 2000 uh, to 2004 bin. And for global sales minus the EU sales, we're looking at you know 650 million. So there is a noticeable difference. And this is just one of the ways that you can use uh, calculated fields to actually just show the difference between two numbers, or you can do more advanced calculations depending on the data that you actually have. So that's it for this video. I hope you learned a little bit more about bins and calculated fields. In the next video, we're gonna be looking at a ton of different visualizations and graphs and charts, and just exploring what options are really are out there for visualizing our data. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe below, and I will see you in the next video.